Welcome to our LaTeX tutorial on text and document formatting. In LaTeX, we can change the appearance and size of text to some extent. For example, we can produce text that is italicized. In this sentence, I'm going to italicize the word italicized. This will produce, and then to get italics, I do backslash text it curly brackets and in the curly brackets I type whatever text I want italicized. So this will produce italicized and then I'm going to close my curly brackets text. We can also use boldface text this will produce and the code for that is backslash text bf for boldfaced curly brackets we can also use the small caps font this will produce and the code for that is backslash text sc curly brackets so that gives us small caps and we can use the typewriter font this will produce and for that we do backslash text tt And that typewriter font is really useful if you are typing a URL, for example, and you want to make it stand out or set it apart from your normal looking text. For example, please visit Mrs. Crummel's website at, and then we can do our backslash text TT and type the URL, HTTP colon slash slash mrscrummel.com and our curly brackets. We can also change the size of our font. Let's look at the sentence. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. If I want to increase the size of the font, I'm going to use the code slash begin large. So let's compare this to please excuse my, and then I want to start making the text larger. So backslash begin in curly brackets the word large. and then type the text you want to make large dear aunt Sally and then we will do slap backslash end curly brackets large and let's build that so if we zoom in some more we may be able to see that the yeah we can see if we zoom in that the second sentence is slightly larger in size than the first and the only thing we increased were, were the words dear aunt Sally and you can see they are a little bit larger in that second sentence if we want to go even larger than that backslash begin and I'm gonna use the word large but this time I'm gonna use a capital L and then end curly brackets again large with a capital L okay, so that uh, is even larger we can continue to go larger 
I'm just going to copy and paste this and change the word large to huge. And we can go even larger if we use huge but with a capital H. We can also make our text size smaller than the normal text. We can use instead of large we would use small. So here, my, here the words Dear Aunt Sally are smaller than the normal text. And we can even go smaller than that using the command tiny. Another type of text formatting we can use is justification. Do we want our text to be centered on the page? left justified or right justified. If I want my text to be centered, I use the command backslash begin curly brackets center and then my text and backslash end curly bracket center. we can see that that text is now centered on the page. To left justify my text, I use begin curly brackets flush left. And then backslash end in curly bra brackets flush left, all one word. Oh, and I got a compiling error on line 31. Let's take a look at that. I misspelled flush left. So we'll fix that. Flush left. Build our document. There we go. Notice that when we use the command flush left, it does not indent the new paragraph, which is why it appears to be further to the left than our sentences above. And we can justify our text to the right using the command flush right. So I'll just replace my flush left here with flush right. And if I scroll over we see that this is right justified. There are several things we can do to format our document so that it appears more structured and organized and one thing is to create a title section. To create a title section you want to go to the beginning of the document right after the begin document command and in order to create the title section we're going to actually use four lines of code. The first one is backslash title and then in curly brackets you would enter your title. The second line backslash author and in curly brackets you would put your name. The third line backslash date and in curly brackets you can type today's date or you can use the command backslash today and when you compile your document it will automatically fill in today's date so that if you save this and come back to it a week from now and you compile it again a week from now it will update automatically uh, but in order to actually create the title section you must include this fourth line which is backslash make title it won't work without that the date 
The third line that shows the date, that is optional. You can omit that if you want, um, but you must include this backslash make title command. So let's go ahead and fill in a title. I'll call this my practice LaTeX document. Author, Mrs. Crummel. I uh, will have it enter today's date for me and let's build this and see what it looks like. Okay, so at the beginning of my document now I do indeed have a title section with our title, the author, and today's date. Now the word LaTeX, notice that when we write that word out we use the capital L, capital T, capital X. But that word LaTeX has a special um, display style and we can enter a command to show that. If you go to in front of the word LaTeX and insert a backslash, and we build that, now you can see it did in fact change the font um, and the appearance of that word LaTeX, although it looks a little bit too close to the word document. So if we want to insert um, a space there, a blank space, we'll go back to our code and do backslash space. That inserts a blank space. We'll build that again. That looks much better. Now the last thing we're going to talk about in this tutorial is creating sections and subsections. This is a great way to organize the information in your document. I'm going to come down to the end for this example. And let's say I'm creating a document and in my document I'm talking about different kinds of functions. So my first type of function might be linear functions, my next might be quadratic functions. So I'm going to create sections in my document uh, using the command backslash section and then in curly brackets you type the name of your section. So my first one will be linear functions. And my second section will be quadratic functions. Now when we build this, uh, the compiler is automatically going to number our sections for us. Let's take a look. Okay, So section 1 linear functions, section 2 quadratic functions, and notice it also increased the font size and made it bold. So it's going to take care of this formatting for us, all the spacing um, and the, the text formatting. Within our sections we can create subsections. So if I were to talk about linear functions I might want to um, discuss the three ways we can write linear equations. For example, I would have a subsection on slope intercept form. And when I do subsections I like to indent just to organize the code. So backslash subsection and my first one's going to be slope intercept form. My next subsection, standard form. And my third subsection, point slope form. Under quadratic functions, I'm going to have some subsections as well. Let's create a subsection for vertex form. One for standard form. And a subsection for factored form. then we can go back in and actually type what we want to say about each of these forms. So for example under slope intercept form I could say the slope intercept form of a linear function is given by and then in math mode y equals ax plus b. 
Okay, so our subsections should also automatically be numbered for us. Okay, we have section one, linear functions, the subsection 1.1 slope intercept form, and then uh, my description there. If we break to the next page, we see our, the rest of our subsections. Then we have section two and our three subsections there. The great thing about using sections and subsections in your documents is it makes it very easy to create a table of contents. Typically you want your table of contents to be the very first part of your document. So if we go all the way back to the beginning, right after begin document, before our title, all I have to type is backslash table of contents, all one word, no spaces. And this, for this command, I, I'm going to have to click build twice. The first time I click build, it's going to gather all of the information it needs to create the table of contents. And the second time I click build, it should create the table of contents for me. Okay, so there we go. Uh, we have our sections, subsections labeled, and the page numbers listed for each. That concludes our tutorial on text and document formatting.